this first Jeru activity, we're going to create a Jeru and have it plant a bunch of flowers in an open field in the pattern of the letter J as shown here. To get started, I'm going to first start off by clearing the island of all the flowers. To do that, I'm going to hit this reset button right over here. Every Jeru method starts with a main method, so after clicking on the main tab, I'm going to create the main method header. In Jeru, every open parenthesis has to have its equivalent closing parenthesis. After the word main, I'm going to use this open bracket and this close bracket. These are known as soft brackets and can be found above the numbers 9 and 0 on your keyboard. To start the main method and to end the main method, I'm going to use these curly brackets which can be found above the double quote key and the enter key on your keyboard. In between these two curly brackets is going to be all the code that I need to write for the main method. To distinguish and make it easier to read exactly what that code is, I'm going to use some indenting. We're going to start off by creating a Jeru. How can we do this? Let's have a look at the six different methods we can use to create a new Jeru. To find those methods and to find all the other Jeru methods, I'm going to click on this question mark character and that's going to bring up the instruction manual for Jeru. Because we want to create, or in other words, instantiate a Jeru, we are currently interested in the instantiation methods, so we're going to click on this instantiation tab. Here is a description of the six different Jeru instantiation methods that there are. We're only going to be interested in two of these for this course. The first one that has no information supplied in the parameters, and then the last one which has all the information supplied in the parameters. In other words, the most complicated way to create a Jeru. Let's start off with the easier version. Let's create a Jeru and let's see where she shows up. So over here, I'm going to say Jeru Jill equals new Jeru. And I'm going to use these soft brackets once again. And in Jeru, as is also the case for Java, Every line of programming either ends in a semicolon or a curly bracket. Let's run this brief little program we've created and see what we've gotten so far. So to do that, I'm going to rewind and I'm going to press the step button. And it's asking me to save the file by giving it a name. It's a good idea to save your files. That way, if you want to continue working tomorrow, you can simply reload the file so you will not have to type in all the text all over again. This particular Jeru file I'm going to call letter J. Now we see that the first line of code, which happens to be our only line of code, is being highlighted. The interpreter is showing us that the next time we hit the play button, this is going to be the line of code that's executed. So let's hit the step button right here. And we can see that a blue Jeru has been created in the top left corner, and that Jeru happens to be pointing in the eastward or right-hand direction. Furthermore, if I bring my cursor over to where the Jeru is, I can see that the cursor location currently indicates that the cell number is 00. zero. This would be a good opportunity for us to discuss how the cell numbers are numbered in Jeru. In Jeru, we have two different numbers, one that represents the row and the other rep that represents the column. The numbering starts with 0 for each of these. So for example, right now my cursor is pointing to the 00, zero cell. If I bring my cursor down one position, we see that the cursor location is now 10. The row number has changed from 0 to 1, but the column number remains at 0. If I was to look at this particular square, you can see that the row number is 0, but the column number is 5. Note that the column number being 5 indicates I'm in the sixth column, because once again, the numbering starts at 0. It turns out that creating a Jeru using this simple instantiation method is not going to be adequate for our needs. The reason why is that we need to start the Jeru closer to the center of the board to start our right letter J. Also, we need to have the Jeru start off life with some flowers. Down here at the bottom, you can see that this particular Jeru, which is named Jill, doesn't have any flowers. That's because we didn't give her any when she was born. So let's rewrite the instantiation method slightly. To do that, I need to first stop the program by hitting the red stop button. 
and now I can come in here and change the code and I'm going to say that seems to be a better starting point for our letter J. Notice down here that the number 50 is indicating that Jill is currently in possession of 50 flowers. That should be plenty to create our letter J. To create the pattern that we want, what we're going to do is add some additional code. I'm going to stop the program. I'm going to place my cursor after the first line and hit the enter button to get a brand new line. I'm going to leave a blank line to make the program easier to read, but the interpreter or compiler will be ignoring all the blank lines in the program. So let's make Jiru, uh, Jill the Jeru plant a flower. To do that, I'm going to say Jill dot plant. If you want to know all the different tricks that a Jeru has up its sleeve, simply click on this question mark and you can get a description of all the various methods that the Jeru has available by clicking on the various tabs. After this flower has been planted, I want the Jeru to take a step forward. To do that, I just use the hop command. And now I want to repeat this pattern to get a nice row of flowers, which is going to represent the top bar of the J. If I want to repeat this pattern several times, I could type this in one at a time. Alternatively, I can just select the lines I want, do a control C, and place the cursor where I want and do a control V. The control C does the copy and the control V does the paste. Let's see what we've got so far. In the past, we were stepping the program by hitting the step button. This time I'm going to fast forward by running the program quickly. I can also adjust the speed at which the program runs by varying this little bar here. Let's choose a speed of 4. Here we see we've got a nice start to our letter J. This would be a good time to discuss the addition of some comments to the program. Comments are ignored by the compiler. However, they are useful to help the reader figure out what's going on. To create a comment in Jeru, I use a double forward slash like this. Now everything else I type on this line will be ignored by the compiler, but can be used to make it easier for the human reader to figure out what's going on. Since these lines of code here represent the top bar of the letter J, I'm going to indicate as such by putting in a comment to that effect. Now what we want to do is we want to turn the Jeru around, get back to the middle, and create the bottom stem. So let me do that by creating another comment here. Okay, and now we're ready to write some more code. First thing we have to do is we have to get the Jeru to turn around completely. To do that, I can execute two right turns or two left turns. Okay, so this would be a good time to discuss what things should be capitalized and what things should not be capitalized in Jeru. Notice that the, the word Jeru is capitalized because Jeru is a class, and it's an important rule in both Jeru and Java that class names are capitalized. Notice also that the term write happens to be all capitalized. That's because the word write is a constant in Jeru. Notice that the variable name Jill itself is small letters. You'll notice that if you ever look at the manual for Jeru, the variable names are capitalized. But we discourage you from doing this because when we eventually transition over to Java, it's going to be an important rule for us that all the variable names start with a small letter. So after turning around, we need to have the Jeru hop a few spaces back to get to the middle. So if we have it hop three times, that should be enough. After we get there, we need to turn left so that we can start creating the bottom stem. Let's see what our new program looks like. We see that the Jeru is now properly positioned to start the downward row. We're going to stop this program here because we don't want to give away the whole show, but you have enough information available now to complete writing the letter J.